Well, I'm definitely still missing CFL football, especially on this particular weekend, also known as Labor Day. But another thing that I always anticipate as a CFL fan when it's Labor Day weekend is for the sake of the players, unfortunately, when they're trying their luck in the NFL to catch on with the NFL team, is I always anticipate NFL cuts and potentially maybe some players that go down south, maybe not quite make it and come back to their respective teams. And there's always seemed to be a few players that we lose to try their luck in the NFL because obviously it's the more superior league. And you'd be better off financially, obviously, even if you're just on the practice roster. So in this video, even though there won't be any CFL football in 2020, I'll talk about uh, some former Calgary Stampeders that have tried their luck in the NFL, and there has actually been some that uh, have caught on to the opening day roster, while others have not, and there's been a few surprises, but they're always still to be green to be seen. That could a player who did not make it to the 53-man opening day roster, that they could still be on the team as a practice roster. And one example of that last year, where I was hoping for maybe there was a chance that we could get an NFL cut back, was Alex Singleton as he did try out with the Philadelphia Eagles and he did not make it to the opening day roster in 2019 and he actually was this close to coming back to Calgary to conclude the 2019 season and definitely would have been a boost if we would have gotten Alex Singleton for the stretch drive and maybe attempt to defend the Grey Cup champions at home. I used just one player but he was so close to the fact that he had his bags packed and apparently he had a ticket that was booked on the way back to Calgary but then he cancelled all his plans because he made the practice roster and I'll be talking about Alex Singleton in this video and I'm just looking at the players that uh, one of the uh, broadcasters or Mark Steven in, on his Facebook page definitely Mark Steven has the definitely great insights if you're a Calgary Stan Peters fan it's Mark Steven sports broadcaster on uh, Facebook and he has his Facebook page where he posts you know lots of pro, you know the White Horse lives for podcast or give insights on moments in Calgary Stampeders history especially this season with this being supposed to be in the 75th anniversary season but he actually made a post on giving an updated NFL transaction list on players that used to be with the Calgary Stampeders and their fate so actually there were three players that uh used to be with the Calgary Stampeders that are actually on 53-man rosters at their respective teams, including linebacker Alex Singleton. So this year, he did make the three 53-man ro roster with the Philadelphia Eagles. So Alex Singleton is a Philadelphia Eagle, this time on the opening day roster. Other former Stampeders, well, defensive back Tajon Campbell. He is on my Chargers, the Los Angeles Chargers. And linebacker James Vodder says he was been on the practice roster. He also made the 53-man roster on the Chicago Bears, or the Bears, as they like to say. So definitely congratulations to Alex Singleton, Tej on Campbell, and James Vodders who are making their teams interesting, Eagles, Bears, and Chargers. However, there was definitely some surprises. Although you never know, I mean, you got it's a different game, but there definitely were some Eye, razor, eye razors. Including one player that I heard that was gaining some traction and slowly learning the game down south. However, unfortunately, with no CFL season this season, I can't get excited about, ooh, could these guys come back? Well, here are some cuts. Well, safety Nate Hawley, last year's Rookie of the Year winner, who he did recently opt out of his contract as uh, when the CFL announced that the season was going to be canceled. I believe now that deadline has passed, that if you had a contract and you could uh, opt out to try out your luck with the NFL, I actually believe if you did that, you lose out on the government benefits that are available from you know, the wage subsidy and that. But Nate Holy, he tried his luck with the Miami Dolphins. He did not make the Miami Dolphins. And here's the surprise. Last year's top receiver, Reggie Bagleton, he got released by the Green Bay Packers, and I kept seeing on Facebook groups, you know, CFL fans, 
people sharing articles and it sounded like Green Bay was raving about Reggie Bagleton in camp, so uh, he did not make it. And actually, defensive back, who also was a teammate with Reggie Bagleton, was also on the Green Bay Packers, Deshaun Amos. He also got uh, released. And then center Brett Jones, who actually came from Saskatchewan. He won the Rookie of the Year back in 2014. He actually did play with the New York Giants, and then eventually he was with the Minnesota Vikings. So there, well, he's been released. So uh, that definitely would have been a great add to get back, Brett Jones, if uh, we had a season plus the ratio buster. And then the last linebacker who also opted out of his contract, linebacker Winton McManus. He uh, tried his luck with the New Orleans Saints until he got uh, released. But it also does say here, NFL teams are allowed to carry a 16-man practice roster in 2020. As of this recording and post, it is unclear if any of the released players will be on their practice roster. So there's probably a chance that many of these players that did not make the main roster will probably be on their practice roster, so in some way they'll still be with the NFL team. Uh, that will come in the next few days, but I just figured I'm not going to... I'll make a video on this now just because there's been some curiosity on how some former Stampeders have been doing, trying their luck in the NFL, either that recently opted out, or if we had a season this season, that they wouldn't have been here at the beginning of camp. And that's the same thing that happens here with training camp, is that we only get a couple preseason games. Well, the interesting thing with the NFL this season, though, given what's been going on, the season is still going to go as scheduled but no fans, there was no preseason at all. So none of the players, especially who were trying their luck in the NFL this season, didn't get to actually get to play in game action. But at least in the CFL, there's always a couple of shocking moves, depending on, you know, salary cap, you know, if there was a rookie that the general rule of thumb in football is if you have a rookie and an established veteran, if the rookie was just as good as the established veteran, you keep the rookie over the veteran because you think of more potential to grow and usually for salary cap constraints. That's the thing happens here that we have a practice roster and it gets expanded. I think it starts off at five and then it goes up to 12 for this weekend with anticipation of NFL cuts and potentially, you know, always getting players back and, Sometimes it happens where if, if you have a star in the CFL that goes in the NFL, try their luck, and then they don't pan out and come back to CFL. Sometimes it's just seamless. They come back and it's like they never left. And other times it's working their way back in or sometimes they lose a step or, you know, it, that just happens in sports. But that's just my updates on Calgary Stampeders uh, there this past few years that uh, were trying their luck in the NFL. Some did actually make the opening day rosters. Others have been released, but I'm going to probably say for many of those players, I'm going to say including Reggie Bagleton, I'm going to probably say he's probably going to still be with the Green Bay Packers, but on the practice roster. So uh, what do you think of this news about uh, NFL players, CFL players trying their luck in the NFL? And that's what always keeps me engaged with football for any you know players and I'd say the few reasons why I declared the now the Los Angeles Chargers they used to be the San Diego Chargers. My team ultimately was visiting the city. It was definitely beautiful back when I visited there back in 2001 with the uh, Sea World and the Zoo. And the fact that at the time, well, I'm going to say the greatest quarterbacks that played for the Cavs, Stan Peters, well, Doug Flutie, I definitely. One of my favorite, probably my favorite Stampeder of all time. Definitely nostalgia for Doug Flutie. And our current head coach, Dave Dickinson, who was also a quarterback who was fresh off of winning the most outstanding player at the time. They both were with the Chargers. So that kind of said, oh, that would be my team. And then, interestingly, you could probably say third. Because if I would say ranking quarterbacks, I mean, Flutie is best. And then we've got Bo. Then I would put Jeff Garcia. He was a San Francisco 49er, and there was a preseason game that the uh, Niners and Chargers played each other where those three quarterbacks for the Calgary Stampeders, we had Flutie, Garcia, and Dickinson, who were all uh, at one time, I think at the same time, all on the same team, were all in that preseason game. So I remember seeing a picture of them that they all posed in their jerseys wearing a Stampeder hat. So, uh, But the Chargers on my team, and we still got Dejon Campbell. So anyway, if you want to follow along this Calgary sports fans journey, on the Flames hip and Roughnecks and Stan Peters. Just uh, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and mostly talk average sports on my channel. 
I also have some personal blogs that tend to call me, and I also do share my experience with them on their own or at a sport event. So if that sounds like be interesting to watch, do follow along with this Calgary Sports Fans journey. You know what you need to do? Just uh, make sure you like subscribe and look at my analytics. Eight percent of you watch my stuff aren't subscribed yet, so hopefully uh, I like my content enough that you will join and subscribe and keep me growing on this platform. And I also have my other social media links down in the description below for other ways you can follow me and get other updates on what I plan to do for any future content on my channel. So, as I say, go Stamps go. I wish I could be uh, saying that for real at McMahon Stadium tomorrow and saying Edmonton sucks. I'm a Calgary fan, so I don't take it the wrong way. But uh, I'm not going to do so this year, but hopefully next year uh, I'll get to do that and celebrate the 75th season a year later. But uh, it is what it is. So, as I say, I'll see you in the next video.